welcome my dear students of class 9A and 9B. In today's class, you know, we have decided to uh, introduce you the same lesson, lesson number two, the Vedic age. And the points, as I mentioned here, you look at it, today's points, comparison between the early and later Vedic age. Second point, political organization. Third point, society. Fourth point, caste system. Now first point, comparison between the early Vedic and later Vedic age. What do you know about early Vedic and what do you know about later Vedic age? Now I am going to clarify it. My dear students, during later Vedic period, many, many, during early Vedic period, the Aryans came to India as nomadic people. They had no settlements. They established their settlements in our country, India. Actually, they came from South, uh, uh, they came from uh, Central Asia. Okay, mid, mid Asia. They came from Central Asia, Mid Asia, and then they established their settlements. But when they came, they came to India as, you know, pastoral people. They came to India in search of uh, cattle, water, and cattle, water, and land, or shelter. But ultimately, they realized that there should be a permanent settlement for them. That's why they established their settlement over our country, India. During early Vedic period, what was the main occupation of the people? Their main occupation was cattle rearing and agriculture. But during later early Vedic period, there was no use of iron. Only they used other metals like bronze, like you know, um, copper, this type of uh, metals they used and uh, made many uh, agricultural implements, weapons out of it. But during later Vedic age, people discovered iron and produced many, many agricultural implements made of iron, which became helpful to them. They started their culti cultivation, agricultural work, and produced. Uh, a very satisfactory quantity, a very good quantity of agricultural crops on their land. Only because of their agricultural implements were made by metal iron. Only for that reason, they took many advantages. Besides, later we create Early Vedic period, during early Vedic period, the women's position was good in the society. Women were highly qualified, they had tried to receive education, they attended yajunas, religious festivals, they recited along with uh, the Brahmins, and they assisted the work of the Brahmins. They were allowed to choose their husbands through the process of Sambara. They the child marriage was declared, uh, child marriage was restricted, and uh, uh, widows also were allowed to be married. That means the people during early Vedic period, early Vedic age, were very much advanced in their thinking and in their uh, concepts. But during later Vedic period, people became more and more arrogant, more and more conservative, more and more superstitious. As a result, 
women's position was declined in the society. Women were not allowed to receive education. On the contrary, they were instructed to look after their household work, their children, their husband, right. As a result, women lost their former glory and remained in the society. During, you know, later Vedic period, during later Vedic period, early Vedic period, sorry, during early Vedic period, society was divided into four categories in early Vedic period. Brahmins, Satriyas, Vaishyas and Sudras during early Vedic period. The Brahmins dominated the society because of their education, because of their cultural uh, uh, ability. Satriyas also established their uh, position in the society since they fought, they protected human beings, they protected countrymen from their danger. Vaishyas earned a lot of money. They established trading relations with other countries to Siru, to Yivaru. And Sutras had no position in the society. They worked uh, uh, from uh, the dawn till night. They were very hard working people. But they had no uh, they had no dignity in the society. They were considered to be untouchable, untouchable people. They lived outside the wall of city. Agriculture and cattle rearing were the main occupations during early Vedic period. Because early Vedic period, the Aryans, you know, they produce uh, crops like barley, wheat, rice, fruits, vegetables. These were grown in their agricultural lands. They ploughed their fields with the help of uh, some domesticated animals. And at the same time, they domesticated them. Cows was considered very sacred and sign of prosperity and wealth. That's why during Yajunas, rich people, they offer uh, cows for the Brahmins. The Brahmins uh, had respect in the society and the Brahmins earned a lot of money at the cost of a rich people of the society. And next point, during later Vedic period, next point, political organization of later Vedic period. Political organization of later Vedic period. You know the Aryans move towards east. The Aryan moves towards east and carved out their own kingdom called Janapadas. The Kurus occupied the region around Delhi and named it Kuruksetra. Hastinapur was their capital. It is believed, it is believed that the battle of Kuruksetra was fought within that very place of Delhi. The Battle of Kurukshetra is believed to have been fought in about 950 BCE. In the later Vedic period, the king became an absolute authority, absolute ruler. And being both the supreme commander and chief justice, that means king in the field of you know, administration in the field of justice, his decision was final, he was all in all. He used a number of titles like Samrat, Mahalaga, Dhiraga, etc. etc. He performed Rajsui Yagga, Rajsui Sacrifice, and uh, Sambar, uh, sorry, and Asamada Yajona to exhibit his power. The king was assisted by a number of ministers like Sangritri, who collected taxes, the structure of the Sava and Samiti also changed. They began to be dominated by the Brahmins since the Brahmins was the last person to have 
uh, uh, control the entire circumstance, the entire society because of their education, because of their acceptance in the society. The king's role was restricted to battle strategy. Each and every decision, in every other decision, the Sabha or the elders and the Samiti or the villagers, they took the decision. Sabha gradually became the king's foe, while the king's son did inherit the throne. The king, the new king, had to have the approval of the Sabha and Samiti. That means, you see, Sabha and Samiti, which was controlled by king once, during the later part of the later Vedic age, that very Sabha and Samiti became more and more active, became more and more uh, uh, prominent in their works, and uh, the king had to depend on the decisions of Sabha and Samiti. It was only in the later Vedic period that the divine right, the divine right to kingship began to get popular. However, you know, certain rules were followed about kingship. For example, in the Mahabharata, Dhritarashtra, Dhritarashtra was denied kingship. Dhritarashtra was denied kingship. Why? Because as per the term, as per the rule of the letter Vedic period, no king would become king who had physically, who was physically handicapped. That's why here that same system was the same system was followed. The same system was followed with Dhritarashtra since Dhritarashtra was blind. That's why uh, his kingship was not considered to be accepted and ultimately uh, he could not become the king. Although he was the last king's eldest son, yet he could not become king. Why? Because he was blind. And what was about the caste system? Caste system, you see, society and caste system, two points are there, society and caste system. During early, during later Vedic age, society was, uh, you know, divided into four categories. These four categories were, were one by one, I'm telling you, that was Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya means people dedicated their lives in studying under their guru. This system of uh, receiving education under guru is known as Gurukul system of education. The guru taught them the teaching of Brahmacharya. Then they would come back to their family and the form of uh, uh, Grihastha. Second, second part was Grihastha, where a man would lead family. The man, a man would lead a family and remain with family family members. And next one, Banaprastha. What is Banaprastha? Every man had right to compare the material world, to compare between the material world and religious world. That means Material world and religious world means in religious world meditating and praying, performing jajunal under the special care of the Brahmins was inevitable. But in material world it was of no use because they worship trees, they worship nature. That's why organizing religious festivals, attending yajunas, it was a glory according to them. But still these were practiced. The fourth one, sannyasa. The fourth one was sannyasa. That means whenever a man would complete his full term, being with, uh, uh, being family members, of the family or head of the family to try to get out of the family and to live in the forest by making meditation because 
meditation was the only way through which a man could reach his goal, a man could reach, uh, uh, a man could fill the existence of the Almighty God. That's why Sanyasa was the last stage and this system was followed during the time of later Vedic period. After this, my dear students, thank you.